probably just say that, you know, obviously not to have expectations as, you know, as if it was anything like last season. I think it's going to be an adjustment, you know, for all of us involved, uh, including the fans. Um, I think that's so important to the game. Um, and especially here, you know, in Kansas City, uh, you know, they're like that extra element that we feed off. So um, I think it's a good deal that, that we are going to have some fans um, in some kind of capacity. Um, but also I, I truly believe that the Chiefs and the NFL would do would, would take the right steps to to help those people, you know, stay safe. Let's go to Adam Teicher. Go ahead, Adam. Hey, Tyron, how you doing today? Doing good. Blessed. Good. Uh, hey, um, I asked you about Travis Kelsey last week about being his teammate. Now I want to ask you about him as a player. Um, from afar, before before you became his teammate, did you have any thoughts about him as a player? Um, and also, uh, you know, what did those change at all when you became his teammate after you started practicing against him and seeing him play play in and play out? Yeah, I've always I've always admired uh, Travis from afar. Um, you know, I've always been a safety inside kind of cover guy. Um, so he was always one of those guys. Um, I didn't necessarily study him in detail uh, because we didn't necessarily play against the Chiefs uh, a lot before I got here. But he's always been one of those fascinating players, um, you know, players that you can, you know, find a mismatch with, with you know, in any kind of defensive scheme. Um, I think, you know, me coming here practicing against him, you know, he works just as hard as me. Uh, I mean, obviously, you know, I got a lot of respect for that. You know, he's always out there. You see a guy like him, you know, practicing through injuries, practicing through, you know, when times are not going, you know, well for him. So um, he's a great talent. Uh, you know, he seems really in sync with, with the offensive system, the scheme, you know, the quarterbacks. You know, even when Matt Moore gets in there, you know, it's kind of like everybody's on the same page that Kelsey's on. So I think that says a lot about his work ethic, you know, and the time that he puts in, you know, with the people around him. Let's go to Aaron Ladd. Go ahead, Aaron. Tyron, we talked with Juan Thornhill yesterday, and he kind of brought us behind the scenes on uh, kind of the work that he's done to get back. What did it mean to see him out there with the ones, and and what does he look like uh, in the locker room? Oh, I mean, it's a blessing, man, to 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 obviously, you know, see a guy come back from an injury like that. Uh, not many people can can truly overcome it, you know, mentally. I think for him, you know, he's in a good space. Um, he has a lot of good people around him, um, and I think, you know. He's confident in himself and his abilities. So I think that's going to actually, you know, help him once he gets on the field. In my opinion, he looks smooth. You know, I've been through two ACLs, so I know it's going to be some growing pains within there. But uh, to say he's eight months since post-op, uh, he looks pretty good. He looks like a natural defensive back. Let's go to Herbie. Go ahead, Herbie. Hey, Ty, just real quick question here. I'm going to toss some names at you, and then I'm going to get your thoughts on this. Patrick Mahomes, Russell Wilson, uh, Lamar Jackson, Deshaun Watson, Dak Prescott. Obviously, they all have something in common. Um, but my question to you is, and you're a guy who appreciates the history of the league. Have we officially and finally reached a point in the National Football League where we no longer look at the, the quarterback skin color? We just say they're a quarterback. Yeah, well, I would hope so. Um, I think all those guys you mentioned – you know, has really set a high standard, you know, for themselves, uh, not just, you know, what they're able to do outside the pocket. Um, I think a lot of those people you named take the mental approach, you know, to the next level, you know, i.e. Tom Brady, Peyton Mannings, all those guys. You could see it in their everyday work. You know, I was fortunate to play with two of those guys that, that you named, and, you know, uh, the standard is there. You know, I think those guys are all about, you know, showing everybody that, they're a quarterback first. They're a team leader first. Um, and then outside of that, you know, they can do some extra special things. But um, I think all those guys are, are really, you know, leaving, you know, this, this roadmap behind them um, so that other, other kids can follow. We've got time for a couple more guys. Let's go Steve and then Darren. Go ahead, Steve. S Steve, you got us? Steve, we're going to come right back to you. Let's go to Darren, okay? Go ahead, Darren. Hey, Tyron. Hope all is well with you, my brother. A uh, couple of questions for you. One, what is the expectation when you all with the year on the Steve Stagnolo's uh, defense and obviously the learning, the learning trajectory that you all had 
uh, coming out of last season, going into this particular season. And then uh, following up with that, something off the field, dealing with your voter registration stuff, how – how involved uh, will the players in the organization be leading up to election day, registering people to vote within the third and fifth district here in, in Kansas city. And, and on election day, what do you, what do you hope or what do you expect the players to do? Will we see you all at the polls, making sure people are getting out there to vote? Yeah. I think to, to answer your first question, you know, we expect to pick up, you know, where we left off last season, you know, as one of the best defenses in the national football league, um, uh, no, we, we we wasn't pretty. Um, no, we don't have this, you know, extra amount of first round draft picks. Uh, we just got a lot of guys that work hard that that fit our scheme really well. A lot of those guys are coming back, so um, the expectation is to be one of the best defenses in the National Football League. Uh, obviously, to start this season faster, um, and then to finish even stronger, you know, than we did um, this past season. Um, I think the I think right now between the organization and different players. You know, obviously the organization uh, is doing this part, um, trying to help other players um, and then the community as well, you know, with this voter registration. Um, and then individually, uh, different players are doing different things, whether it be in their own community, through their own foundation. So I do expect more players, not just with the Chiefs, but all around the NFL, um, to go back to their communities, um, to, 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 to sit in on board meetings, um, not even when they're not able to to be present uh, in certain situations. Um, I do expect people to speak up more, um, hold themselves accountable more, and then also encourage, you know, everyone around them uh, to vote. Let's go back to Steve and see if we can get a last one. Steve, can you hear us okay? Hey, can you hear me? Gotcha. Yep. All right, cool. Uh, Tyron, to piggyback on Aaron's question earlier about Juan, he said yesterday uh, that he talked to you about your ACL injuries. Just how much did he actually lean on you, so to speak, and what was your message to him, uh, if you can share that with us? And, and also, following up, I have a follow-up too, Brad. Yeah, um, I think Juan is, like I mentioned earlier, he's a confident kid. Um, I wouldn't say that, you know, I gave him this, this secret ingredients, you know, a special recipe. Um, you know, I just told a young man to, to keep a clear head, to, you know, not overwhelm himself, um, to, to not necessarily look – at the end of the road, you know, just take it day by day, you know, and um, everything will work out in his favor. You know, he's a hardworking kid. Um, he's a listener. Um, and I think that helps you, you know, when you're going through through tough times. Um, but to see him back on the field with a smile on his face, you know, even when he wasn't on the field, he was in meetings with us, you know, still communicating, answering all the questions. So, you know, uh, he's a guy that you can obviously see hasn't detached, um, you know, from football. And I think that's so important. That also helps people kind of get over the hump, you know, of, of any injury. You know, I think anybody that's able to stay to stay attached to, you know, what they're doing, um, you know, it seems like they're never they're never checked out. They're always there. And and also in a normal world, you guys will be getting ready to play your second game against the Arizona Cardinals. Have you has your body said, wait, something is off yet? Um, as far as not playing those games because you've been in the league for a little while and then when you found out that you weren't going to be able to go back for the first time to play in Arizona, what was that feeling like? Um, you know what? I think, you know, here in Coach Reed, you know, system, this organization, uh, it's a lot of practice reps. You know, it's a grind. You know, obviously we're, we're playing against some really good players, MVP players, you know, players that are considered the, the best at their position. So um, in, in my mind, you know, outside of, you know, falling on the ground, tackling people, um, I think more, I think we'll definitely, you know, be ready um, to roll.